The term satsang has several levels of meaning. It refers to the soul's choosing to associate with the teachings of the masters in the form of written text or scriptures or a recording of a talk by a master or attending a talk in person by a master or attending a satsang gathering where such information is presented. Satsang also refers to association with God, the soul's association with the inner realms and the supreme being. Satsang is an oasis. It is a protective hedge against the agitations of the world. A satsang gathering is a place of rest, of spiritual repose, where only truth is the focus, and everything else is abstained from, tuned out. Truth becomes the only focus. Meditation and satsang both are a source of repose or spiritual rest, a kind of sanctuary from the outer world. A place where the soul can go to recharge, to refocus. The following is a poem from Ja'aladin Rumi, the Sufi poet. Your task to work with all the passion of your being to acquire an inner light so you escape and are safe from the fires of madness, illusion, and confusion that are and always will be the world. Welcome to today's Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today my focus is living a spiritual way of life. We'll be exploring the teachings of various masters, different categories of writings of the past and the present. Up first... The human condition, as viewed from the point of view of the masters, a kind of philosophical or metaphysical view of the human condition. God is the ocean of love, the ocean of infinite spirit. The ocean of infinite spirit is all, in all. It is reality, it is timeless and above or transcendent but in the human form has become a separate self-identity. The soul is wearing several subtle bodies, several avatars of mind and the body, and has become an individualized drop from this ocean of love, an individualized drop of spirit, experiencing outer worlds for a time. The message of the Masters is to re-identify with that hidden self, that soul, once again. This is from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. In the center behind and above the eyes there is an aperture. On this side of it is the material world in which we are now living. And on the other side is the astral world. The following is from the teachings of Sant Kripal Singh. This single or third eye provides an ingress into the spiritual worlds, the kingdom of the heavens, now a lost realm to most of us. Of this inlet or ingress, little is known by people at large. But as Christ said, if your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. Close your eyes as in sleep and look sweetly, lovingly, intently into the middle of the darkness lying in front of you. You will see a dark veil. That which sees the dark veil within, without the help of your physical eyes, is the inner eye.
The following is from the writings of Dionysus, the Syriac mystic. The simple, absolute, and immutable mysteries of divine truth are hidden in the superluminous darkness. For this darkness, though of deepest obscurity, is yet radiantly clear, and though beyond touch and sight, it more than all fills our unseeing minds with splendors of transcendent beauty. The following is from St. Augustine. And I entered and beheld with the eye of my soul the light unchangeable. He that knows the truth knows what that light is, and he that knows it knows eternity. This is from Path of the Masters by Julian P. Johnson. In the march of the ages, cycle after cycle, on every planet where intelligent beings reside, the great masters are the light bearers of that world. Until the end of the ages, they will remain the friends and saviors of those who struggle toward the light. Sant Mat, what it is. The meditation practice of Sant Mat has been described by some as an attempt at a conscious near death experience, a kind of gradual exploration of inner space, the kingdom of the heavens that are within, which, as the ancients have said, resembles death before dying. Ancients living in Greece, following the teachings of Platonism and the teachings of Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans, likened spiritual practice to death, saying that to be initiated into the mysteries takes you to the same place that those who experience death go to. A kind of glimpse of the afterlife. Spiritual practice is a kind of dress rehearsal for eternity. And there are indeed parallels between meditation practice and the near-death experience. Sufis and saints even coined the term death before dying, or die to live, as a way of describing meditation. It says in the book, the way out is in. In all the higher regions, heaven's music is the spiritual food. One of the key practices of Sant Mat is Surat Shabad Yoga, which includes hearing the divine or heavenly music. And here this is described as food for the soul, sustenance for the Surat, the attention faculty of the soul. In all higher regions, heaven's music is the spiritual food. The following is from a very rare discourse by Shahai Swami, one of the disciples and successors of Maharishi Mehi Paramahans, which describes this process of the ascension of the soul, going within, you know, getting to the third eye center and making this ascension through the several different inner regions or heavenly levels or realms. He says, God is perceivable only through the soul, but our individual soul has become surrounded or covered by several sheaths or subtle bodies, astral body, causal body, mental body, etc. So long as it remains in the captivity of these various subtle bodies and the physical body, it will be under the knowledge of these bodies and organs only will be under illusory knowledge only and will not be able to realize God. In order to know the Supreme Being, the Jiva Atma, the Jiva Atma or soul, or the individualized soul, shall have to liberate itself from these bondages. The one who is able to liberate himself from the body and the subtle bodies 
is able to lift himself beyond the universe also. That's a, a very nice way of putting it. From Shahai Swami. That's a nice way of putting it. When you make this ascension through the different planes, this is going beyond the universe. And of course, it's actually going beyond the astral plane or astral universe, causal plane, causal universe. In other words, not only going beyond the physical universe, but these other realms as well. For many, the astral plane is the goal with a lot of paths out there that you'll encounter. In fact, uh, most of what you'll find on the bookstore shelves written by those best-selling spiritual authors basically is about getting to the astral level. But the teachings of Sant Mat are not about getting to the astral plane through some sort of astral travel, but passing through the astral plane in what is more accurately described as soul travel. The ascension of the soul is not only about rising above body consciousness, but transcending all of these lower realms of duality and illusion, leaving them all behind, the astral plane, causal plane, mental plane, etheric, and reaching our true home, which is not based in time, space, in the realms of time and form, but is completely beyond them altogether, given descriptions such as Satlok, which means the true eternal spiritual realm, or Sach Khand, a Sikh term that means that as well, the true eternal spiritual realm. The soul's natural habitat is not the astral plane. The soul's habitat is the plane of all souls. It is about that drop returning home again to the ocean of love. That's its true home, not the astral plane. It has nothing to do with psychic astral as being the, the next level up and final destination. Not at all. The true home of the soul, the true identity of the soul is that spirit entity that is that spark is that drop that comes from the supreme being described as the ocean of love and all consciousness that's the true home of the soul and the goal of Sant Mat meditation is not about getting to the astral level or hearing some astral sound and being content with that but to return to the true spiritual home, Satlok or Sachkhand, the realm of the Supreme Being, the natural habitat of the soul, which has been likened by some mystics of the past as like a pearl that's lost in the mud. But it's still a pearl of great value, as it says in the Gnostic Gospel of Philip. It just needs to be liberated from its condition and the mud needs to be washed off and then it becomes its true nature you know this shining pearl the true nature is the surat the soul the self covered over by all of these subtle bodies and the physical body and the goal of the path is to return home again to become that luminous self or surat once again in its own natural habitat above worlds of time, space, illusion, and duality. The following is from Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. The path leading to God is within your heart. Enter into the Ajna Chakra or third eye center and you will find your beloved God is found not in a man-made Kaaba, or holy place, but in a natural Kaaba, within your own heart or self. Turn your attention within. You should listen attentively to the reverberating divine sound. The celestial sound is coming to take you back to the source. 
This is from the Sri Paramhans Advait Mat Granth, known as the Big Blue Book. The meditation techniques used by the Path of the Masters help in withdrawing all of the senses and directing them towards concentration to fix the attention or surat, the attention faculty of the soul, on the shabad, the inner sound current, and to reach the stage of deep meditation. This is the main aim of these practices. The following is from the mystic poetry of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. Listen within, day and night. You will hear blissful inner sounds. Within everyone reverberates Shabad, the sound current, about which no one knows. The Brahmanand, or cosmos, is represented in the body in every respect. Says Tulsi, open your inner eyes and the Master will show it to you. Glittering light shines in the region of the inner sky, which only a brave one can behold. If one seeks the truth, one will not go down the transmigratory cycle. The transmigratory cycle. If one meets the merciful Satguru, one will come to know of all the secrets from him. If one renders service to a saint, he will tell one of the whereabouts of the abode. Says Tulsi, it is only by being dead whilst alive that one can find the perfect guru. From the mystic poetry of Saint Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. A note about being dead whilst alive or death before dying. A popular saying used by saints and Sufi poets espousing the view that rising above body consciousness or soul travel during meditation practice is a preparation or rehearsal for the afterlife. Hazrat Sultan Bahu, the Sufi poet, once said, Let us die before dying, O Bahu. Only then is the Lord attained. Rising above body consciousness is essential. Following the meditation practice, one is given the initiation by a living master and learns the secrets of meditation practice, which takes one to the third eye center and takes one within. And beyond the body, one rises above body consciousness and goes back to their true self again, participates in this ascension process of the soul, back to Satlok or Sachkhand. Another key teaching of the masters is bhakti or spiritual love. Without love, you ain't nothing without love, which is Larry Norman's paraphrase of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, something that I believe the Apostle Paul was quoting and incorporated into one of his letters. Without love, all worship is a burden, all dancing is a chore, all music is mere noise, all the rain of heaven may fall into the sea. Without love, not one drop could become a pearl, says Rumi. These verses are to be found in the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures, a translation here known as the Gospel of the Guru Granth Sahib, edited by Duncan Greenlees, one of the many volumes of the World Gospel series published long ago by Theosophy. Only the name of God can delight the heart. 
in return comes nectar filled with the essential reality. The one whose heart and body are lovingly attached to the name, the one whose heart and body are lovingly attached to the name, is drenched in nectar. The one who is united with the name remains ever in love with the divine void, soon the third heavenly realm. God's servant is intoxicated through and through with God's presence. On remembering the Lord's name, heart and body dissolve in love, and one drinks God's bliss or nectar. This is a passage from Baba Ram Singh. By doing Simran, when there is this love between the soul and God Almighty, each cell of our body, each drop of our blood and flesh, all of them get completely soaked in this love. And that is how the love emanates from each and every cell of the body. Here Baba Ram Singh refers to the practice of Simran, the repetition of various sacred names of God for the purpose of divine remembrance. To practice spiritual awakening in a world of slumber, to keep coming back, to focus and refocus, center and recenter again and again on our spiritual practice by repeating the names we were given at the time of our initiation. We keep coming back to those names and they summon us to awakening again and again. And if Simran is practiced in a bhakti or devotional, a loving devotional sort of way, they are most effective. Some verses from the letters of Huzur Maharaj Rai Salagram who wrote a great series of volumes known as Prim Patra Radhaswami Volumes 1 through 6. I've been a reader of Rai Salagram for a very long time. Go on regularly with your meditation practice, keeping your mind and senses undisturbed as far as possible, and trust in the compassion of the Supreme Father to grant you strength gradually as you advance. You will progress inward daily. There is no such thing as retrograde movement. Everything depends on the purity of heart, or in other words, upon the degree of affection each one has for the Supreme Father and the extent to which he has cleared his mind of all other affections, or to be more clear, the extent to which one has waved away other worldly affections and given preference to the most holy love of the Supreme Father. The Ethical Foundation of Sant Mat, Ahimsa, or Nonviolence in Thought, Word, and Deed. The wisdom of not getting too attached, the wisdom of not getting caught up in the drama of the illusion, and to try and live a life that is low karma. Thoughts are like seeds that sprout into words and deeds. The teachings of the Masters get us to examine our thoughts, words, and deeds in order to cultivate in us a desire to live a low karma, low drama life. 
where there's enough peace and tranquility on the outside to make it easier to get to peace and tranquility within. The low karma, ahimsa lifestyle of nonviolence in thought, word, and deed makes it much easier to meditate, to go within. The following is from a great ethical book of the Sant tradition called 1008 Kabir Vani, some Sakis of Guru Kabir. These are very wonderful. I wish more people knew about this particular book. Fortunately, it's now for free, available online at archive.org, the Internet Archive. I noticed someone uploaded it at some point there. It's a wonderful book to consult, very much like Jain Sutras of Wisdom about ethics, about ahimsa, you know, what would Mahavira do? What would Kabir do? You know, a lot of ethical principles. Those are so handy. Those are so helpful to contemplate. The 1008 Kabir Vani is a very useful manual for thoughts, words, and deeds here on planet Earth. Kabir says, keeping in touch with the worldly kind of people causes obstruction in practicing spirituality. And so, either one should remember the Supreme Self with love or bhakti, or one should render his service or siva or seva with devotion to the saints and sages and keep himself in the sacred company of pious people, i.e. worldly relationships do not help a person develop spiritually and so one should practice true knowledge in one's life. Kabir's way of saying, choose wisely who you hang out with. Choose your company wisely because we are indeed influenced by the company that we keep. And of course, on this path of the masters, we seek to sit at the feet of the saints, read the words of the saints, sing the hymns of the saints, focus on the teachings of the masters, the saints, the sat sat gurus, the saints, and be influenced by their example. Sant Mat is the path of not only meditation not only soul travel beyond the universe and the other universes or dimensions, astral plane, causal plane, and so on, Santmat is a path of bhakti or love. Discipline will take you only so far when it comes to sitting down to do your spiritual practice, to do your meditation practice. You not only have to feel compelled to meditate, to follow the teachings and do the meditation. You have to want to. You have to enjoy it. You have to tap into the bliss within and find meditation to be not just some sort of legalistic obligation, putting in some time every day to fulfill your obligation, but rather it is a source of joy. It is a source of spiritual rest and repose, oasis, and something you love doing, that you enjoy doing. It is a bhakti kind of practice. And so, Santmat is not only a path defined by Surat Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation, but also is very much a path of bhakti, love and devotion. This is titled Santmat as a Path of Love by Baba Ram Singh. Santmat is a path of love and a path of affection. This is the path created by God Almighty Himself. It is not a path created by any Mahatma. It has always been the path, and it has existed from the time the human form first took shape. It is the path through which, plane by plane, the soul has descended from God Almighty, by way of the sound current and has now come into this current 
human form. And when it goes back also, it will go plane by plane through the sound current. This path has been there, latent, uniquely within the human form at all times. It is on this path that the saints have gone back to God Almighty with the grace of their masters. And it is on this same path that we will go with the grace of our masters. This paragraph by Baba Ram Singh reminds me of a passage from Baba Devi Sahib of Muradabad that the light and sound were placed in the human form by the Supreme Being. This path of the Masters is literally a path created by the Supreme Being. It's not a path that was created by any particular sect in history. It is a literal path existing within, consisting of divine light and divine sound. And so the, the attention faculty of the soul or surat focuses their attention on this inner light and inner sound. So this is a path that is a natural path that has existed. It is a reality that is within us whether we know it or not. This path of inner light and sound is not the invention of any sect or any Mahatma. It is something created by the Supreme Being that is within everyone, whether they know it or not. A great definition of the Sant Sat Guru, the living master, from the writings of Baba Ram Singh. A living master is one who has manifested this Shabad, this light and sound, within his being to the extent that he can at will consciously travel the entire path from the physical plane to the true abode of God Almighty, Sach Khand, the true realm, a place of indescribable love, light, and blissful intoxication in God's presence, reconnecting souls with the full awareness of God Almighty is a living master's sole purpose and destiny. And he gives this service freely to dedicated seekers. He has no other worldly desires or motives. What a wonderful definition of what the job of a living master is, the, de the job description of the Sant Sat Guru. Reconnecting souls with the full awareness of God Almighty is a living master's sole purpose and destiny, says Baba Ram Singh. Thank you for joining me today for the Sant Mat Sat Song podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. I want to share with you a mystic poem taking us out, wrapping up today's program, today's podcast. Mystic verses of Sant Sajo Bai from a book I acquired recently. I wasn't sure when I was ordering this book, I wasn't sure if it was going to be any good or not. But it turned out to be wonderful. Sant Sajo Bai is a famous disciple of Sant Cherandas. And this translation turned out to be really wonderful. It's a book called Sahaj Prakash, The Brightness of Simplicity, featuring the mystic poetry of Sant Sajo Bai. The world is like an army of stars in the dawn sky. Sajo says they will not stay, like a pearl of dew, like water in the hollow of your hands. The mind makes a fortress of smoke and creates a glorious kingdom there, 
It is a game of hide and seek. Nothing happens. No truth is told. Know that the world is false. Only the soul remains. Sajo says, Know the true self, which time cannot destroy. <laughs>